video, we're going to explore the, some basics of soldering. Uh, the, in, in the example, we're going to be using a spade connector. We'll be soldering it onto some uh, stranded copper wire. Uh, this is a great way to learn to solder. Uh, very easy um, to solder these connectors onto wire. The connectors themselves are relatively inexpensive, and you can just use some scrap pieces of wire to practice on. Before we get into the actual soldering techniques, let's just take a second and look at the, uh, at the wire. When you strip away the insulation, it's important to strip away uh, the right amount of insulation for the terminal that you're using. In this case here, I've intentionally stripped too much insulation away so that when I put my spade connector on, what you'll notice is that the copper wire uh, sticks out from the barrel section of this particular connector. Now from a soldering standpoint, the solder joint will be just fine. It'll have a nice uh, strong solder joint, if, uh, you know, assuming that you solder it properly. But what's going to happen here is when we go to uh, attach this uh, spade connector and this wire to a terminal block, uh, the, the portion of the, the wire that is protruding beyond the barrel is going to actually interfere with the screw or the post on your terminal block. So you won't be able to uh, slide the, uh, the spade terminal all the way onto the terminal block. So it's important to, to strip away the right amount of insulation. Let's look at another piece of wire that I have here. In this particular case, I've stripped away uh, about a quarter of an inch, maybe five sixteenths of an inch of insulation. And when we slip that same uh, uh, connector onto the, onto the end of the wire, you'll notice that there's no uh, copper wire that's protruding beyond the barrel. Uh, yet the, the uh, strands of the wire are readily accessible uh, in terms of soldering. When we get ready to solder it, we'll have no problem uh, soldering that joint. We'll get a nice strong joint, and we're going to put it onto the terminal connector. Uh, the uh, spade terminal won't interfere in any way with the, the screws on the terminal block. All right, so let's, um, let's look at the steps uh, to solder here. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to prepare the, the wire uh, for soldering. Now in this case here, this is some liquid flux. You can also get this in paste form. Uh, and this is rosin flux. It's very important if you're doing anything with uh, electronics. Uh, don't use acid core flux like you would use for, for plumbing applications. Um, it will corrode the, uh, the copper, the, the joint, it'll fail over time. So I'm just going to take a brush uh, and I'm just going to dab a little bit of, uh, of my, uh, my rosin flux onto the wire. Now you may be thinking or asking yourself, you know, why is, why is Steve doing that? Why is uh, he applying flux when the solder that I've purchased, it's rosin uh, solder and it already uh, has flux impregnated into it? And the answer is, um, that's true. Uh, many of the, of the solders that you'll purchase, the rosin solders, you know, will have um, a small amount of flux impregnated right in, uh, into the solder itself. However, you'll, uh, you'll find um, that if you use uh, a liquid or a paste flux on your solder joints, that uh, the soldering will go much easier. There just isn't enough flux in most solder um, to facilitate the soldering process. All right, so now that, we've, um, now that we've put some flux on the end of our wire, we'll go ahead and crimp it, like so. All right, and now we have a mechanical crimp, and we're ready to, you know, to solder the joint. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want both hands free when we're soldering um, these terminals onto the wire. And in general, when you're soldering, if you can set up the work, the joint that, it, uh, that you're trying to solder so that you can uh, have both hands free, it's going to be much, much easier. Uh, now, at electronic stores and so on, they make these little helping hands uh, type tools that you can purchase. They have uh, typically alligator clips that will hold the wire securely and other uh, ele electrical components uh, when you're soldering. Um, I've used them in the past. They work just fine. Uh, but I prefer uh, an arrangement that I've made up using a uh, quick release clamp better. And the reason for that is I can, I can actually, um, with this uh, jaw arrangement here, I can actually clamp and secure multiple wires at one time and then that way I can go down with my soldering I can do it more in a production line type fashion. But to demonstrate this I'll just use the clamp. This particular clamp came from Sears by the way um, you know down in the hardware section. I did trim the uh, the end of it a bit because it's a bit unwieldy um, when using it on, on a table or a workbench or whatever and I put some uh, some washers on the end of it to, to serve as a counterweight uh, to make sure that the clamp doesn't tip over when I'm uh, I'm using it to um, to solder. Uh, 